Good Friday. John 19, 17 through 37. Well, we're finally here. We're finally at the time. The time in which our Lord is crucified. Your Lord was crucified for you. This is what Jesus had been talking about from the very beginning. It's what we've been talking about since since uh, Monday with the Annunciation of our Lord. He became incarnate, that little baby inside of, of Mary, to, to one day, finally, eventually end up on the cross. That's what Jesus came to do, and now he's there. His time has come. And a lot has happened since uh, we talked on uh, Monday, Thursday. There was the praying in the garden. There was the, the beatings. There was the uh, delivering, uh, uh, Joseph delivering him over to to the, the soldiers. There was the, the uh, uh, false testimonies in, in the synagogues and brought before Pilate and brought before Herod and brought before Pilate again and all these beatings and crown of thorns. A lot happens, but here we've got Jesus finally. He's on the cross. And the section that I wanted to focus on here is maybe an, an overlooked one. I know that I overlooked it for a long, long time. Um, it's a section, I believe it's uh, verses uh, 22 and 23 or 23 and 24. It's where the, the uh, soldiers are gambling for his clothes. And evidently there's four of them, right? Because they, they divide up his clothes into four equal parts. So they each get one, I guess. And, but there's this seamless tunic. It's, 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 uh, the Greek speaks about it as this one uh, worn underneath the other one, uh, closest to the skin. So it's this one tunic. It's this one piece of, of fabric, right? There's no place to divide it up. There isn't a shirt and pants or any of that sort of stuff. And they say, hey, let's not rip it apart. Let us all just get, uh, one of us just get it. And so they cast lots for it. I always wondered about that. Now, first and foremost, this is fulfilling, and John lets us know this, and, and that's the most important thing. This is fulfilling uh, what uh, King David said in Psalm 22. Um, They'll cast lots for my clothing. Maybe you actually uh, uh, chanted that tonight, or you will chant that tonight on Good Friday at church. But have you ever thought about the guy who went home with that tunic? Have you ever thought about it? Because some man actually did go home, a soldier did, and he brought that tunic into his house and he wore it. He wore Christ's clothes. That's kind of interesting. Now, not that we uh, really believe in relics or any of that sort of stuff, and it's not really that important, that, that actual piece of garment, but it does speak to something even greater and something more important that, that goes beyond just that one man. It, it speaks to what Christ has actually done, his whole purpose, right? Because on the cross, Jesus became sin. That's what St. Paul tells us, right? God made him to, who knew no sin to be sin, right? So we could become the righteousness of God. So on the cross, Christ was sin. He was your sin. We Theologians, and we can talk about it, you can talk about it this way as well. It's this great exchange where Christ takes what is evil and bad and deadly of ours, and then he gives to, uh, gives to us what is good and righteous and of life that is his. And so he, on that cross, is actually taking your sin, and he stands there, hangs there, with the sinner's clothes on, its nakedness, goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. But he gives to you his robe of righteousness. You got that in your baptism. You're clothed with Christ. You put on his righteousness. You are now holy and righteous and clean and forgiven. And that's what the cross is for you. That's what your baptism is for you. So maybe this Good Friday, let's think and ponder on that this blessed great exchange in which Christ wears our clothes and we get to wear his. Thanks be to God.